Hello everyone, welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we begin with Notepad because I'm trying to figure out real antennas and what it's trying to do. And it's a little bit complicated because first of all we have this tracking station upgrade thing which doesn't seem to be matching what we're getting and that's because first of all it's when you don't have realism overhaul. Unfortunately when we do have realism overhaul I don't know how realism overhaul is actually doing this upgrade thing. Uh, perhaps because it's dependent on RP1, uh, I don't know, but uh, we're certainly not getting these upgrades. Our first upgrade was 120,000, um, and then here it's got the KCT building techs that uh, limit us based on the technology, what upgrade we can get, and that didn't seem to be active. And in any case, for some reason, real antennas seem to think seems to think that I am RP0. Uh, so it wouldn't apply to us there. Uh, so none of this is being applied to us right now. Uh, on top of that, the technologies for the tracking station are based on date. And really, uh, we, we are in the year 2000. So we should have DSN that is higher technology than what we've got right now. We already have an upgrade in the works, so I don't really want to do that. But on the other hand, we also shouldn't need to do that because our DSN network should just be fully upgraded. Okay, so this is likely to go wrong, but let me explain what I've got here. First of all, I've set things that were at a tech level of 8 or below to tech level 0. So we should have that at the beginning because uh, that technology was active before the year 2000. So I've just wiped those out and turned them into tech level 0 things. And then tech level 1 is slightly beyond the year 2000. So we've got a tech level 1 here, but we really only have two tech levels. Uh, and then same down here, I've sort of collapsed the tech levels so that the, this one, the K-band being added to the DSN is a tech level 1 thing. I don't know if we get tech level 1 or when we get tech level 1, but uh, basically we're going to have most of the DSN stuff available to us right at the start. Uh, what we won't have is the stuff on the antennae. So we will still need the tech required for the antenna upgrades, the part upgrades, and the parts will get better. But the DSN will be at its year 2000 level, is my goal here. Okay, well, I guess I have solved the problem. We have tech level 1 for our antennas, but not for the DSN. Uh, but now if I select the moon here, we have plenty of bandwidth at S-band or uh, UHF, we don't. UHF, oh, well, we don't have a transmit on UHF. We can receive, if we bump that up a little bit more, then we can transmit. Uh, but, I mean, it's not OP by any stretch of the imagination, that's for sure. Um, S-band, that's, you know, 330 bits per second. And we diminish as we go down here and ultimately don't have enough. So, yeah, it's just that I've set the DSN to be year 2000-ish DSN. And then we also have X-Band potentially. Now, do we need the commutatron at all? That's the question. Maybe I can do this without the commutatron. Do we have enough gain? That had the two decibel eyes. Maybe this will have enough. Let's see. Moon? Well, not so much there. Uh, well, if we bump it up to 42 decibel meters here, we can with UHF. But that bandwidth is horrible. S band, it's okay. I don't even know what probes right now, like the ones they sent on the moon, sent to the moon, I don't know what band they use. <laughs> I'm guilty, I'm horrible. Uh, but okay, so what I'm reading here is we can get this 25 decibel me milliwatts, milliwatts, not meters, milliwatts with S-band and the DSN there communicating with each other all happy. And that will solve one problem. I should put more battery though. We, Whenever we we're on the nighttime side it loses power right now and that's never a good thing. So, power, battery pack for a CubeSat. Let's just 
fill up the slots with batteries. This does still... Uh, does this have the degradation? I guess it doesn't have the degradation thing. I'll have to fix the solar panel so that it actually has the solar panel de degradation feature. Uh, I, I wonder if any of them do or whether that's an RP1 thing. Okay, well I've shoved some extra batteries in. So we've got that improvement. That still leaves a lot of question marks. Maybe instead of having this stage try and do so much, we should have a little stage with the CubeSat. Right? We could just stage it off and it'll have its tiny little stage with little thrusters and everything. And it'll be hypergolic. That's a hydrazine thruster. Got high pressure tanks. Oh, why are they so why why is it trying to be uh, Thor Abel? We don't need MLI layers down here anymore. Um That's a awful high thrust weight ratio for this little engine. But we could use this 100 Newton thruster. 40 ignitions, not unlimited. This one actually is MH and Mon 3. So we would need additional hydrazine. Okay, I think that's a better deal overall. In theory, we have comms. We probably don't need that tall fairing, but we'll keep it. We'll keep it. We'll call this Serenity 2. We've changed quite a lot of things. Can we build it quickly enough, though? 49 days. We basically have one shot. I'm worried about those RCS failures. So, why don't I make a fix for that, too? So, um, base chance of failure 0.1. I'm gonna go 0 0.01. And we're gonna make the expected lifetime 60 and see how that works out for us. I don't know what units these are. Um, but I'll make this a patch for O-Scrap that comes with RP2000 as well. And all these will be bundled in the next version of RP2000, so... Okay, hopefully... I'll restart the game so that this takes, and hopefully that will save us from losing half of our RCS boards just on the way to the moon. Okay, so presumably o scrap won't be so unkind to our RCS thrusters, and I am going to start to build this. But it's still a risk. We have 64 days to complete. Maybe... Is there a way to rush in this? Well, yeah, we can uh, rush build with this method. I think we should start that out earlier rather than later. I want enough time to potentially build a second one. So let's take that risk. It's better than having that failure cost. Okay, we've got this one done and I've got a second one under construction. I've rushed it a little bit uh, to make sure that we've got that ready in case this one fails because, you know, some random failure could occur. But also, if the lunar flyby does get done with this one, we could use that one as a lunar impactor. So, either way, it should be good. So, rolling this out. And we might as well launch and just see what time we need to line up with the moon at. Still don't have any maneuver nodes or anything like that. Let's see how the new comms work. The uh, main thing is that I can't target the moon to see my relative inclination to it. It looks like it's a daylight launch. Unless I've made some sort of horrible mistake. Very nervous right now. We don't want to lose the money. Okay. Seems that way. Throttle up. SAS is on. Ignition. And launch. Alright, we are past the speed of sound. Okay, separation and ignition, that's fine. And fairings, very good. Okay, and next, ether engine. Ooh, it wobbled a little bit. Okay, that's good enough for now, and in this ether stage we have 2,100, so we'll need 
another 1,000 from the next stage, which is going to take a little bit, but that's fine. So potentially we could have a probe that can actually make orbit around the moon um, if we could hit it a little bit more accurately, though. Well, there's our prior missions. Going to try a different time. Around here-ish will do. It depends on comms, though. As far as our orbit is concerned, we are not as in line as I'd like. But, again, we have some fuel for corrections. And we'll do the burn over Tanana Reeve. We've got communication with Tanana Reeve, but we don't have much down range here. So we, if we have to, we might have to go around if this is getting a little bit stretched. I don't know if our other missions are acting like relays. Doesn't seem like it. I reduced the RCS tanks on this stage, but we still have a bit. Ah, uh, they do go... I don't think they're providing too much extra. Okay, well, let's not go overboard there. Separation. We've lost comms. Apparently, our comms were... were payload adapter comms. Uh-oh. Well, Tanana Reeve is not a DSN, right? Maybe it doesn't have the right band? Yeah, it doesn't have... This is only S-band. Uh-oh. <laughs> I forgot about these bands. We were in orbit and everything, you know. We can wait and all. But... Yeah, I forgot about the bands. I should have had a backup. Now we've got comms, because we're communicating with uh, Australia. With the, the station there. Um, we're not going to be with Madrid anytime soon. Because it's too far north. Eventually, the timing's not going to be great for the moon. Maybe I should just go prograde. And start burning now? This doesn't seem efficient. I'm mainly trying to use this burn to delay our potential arrival at the moon, because right now we're really close to the moon. So, I'm gonna take a risk here. I'm gonna cut there and come around and then try to burn at periapsis, which might be close enough to... I don't think it's close enough to anything, actually. But we can't keep going the way we are, so... But here... Canberra's right there now. And we are, we've got a higher periapsis. We're not close to that periapsis right now. Uh, it's not quite hitting the prograde vector here. Oh, we lost we lost the S RCS port. It's probably confused. Okay, let's try. I guess we're not too bad off. We seem to be crossing the moon's orbit close to there. Uh, it's looking a little bit stretchy. That communication line. Oh, we lost comms. And actually, because of the inaccuracy of our burns, we might not even have enough Delta V here. The RCS can provide a little bit more. Ooh, but it's going all over the place. Because of the one that got messed up. Whoa, we're spinning. And it's out. Okay, well... Um, well, we're building another one. We'll have to fix its comms. We, we shouldn't be under acceleration. Nothing should be causing acceleration on this. The spinning is apparently too much for it. Gosh darn you. 
I think we'll have to wait until we get some comms before I can time warp properly. Okay, can you please let me regular time warp? No? No? Come on, pick up some station. Okay, seriously though, shouldn't we be able to communicate with the cape by now? Just looking at it, we should have line of sight with it. Hmm. Well, I mean, the cape isn't actually the DSN, it's Goldstone that is. Oh, Goldstone. Okay, well, I, I don't think I can... I'm gonna abandon the mission. I don't think I can hang out with it any longer, it's taking too long. And I can't time warp fully. Okay, so we basically know what we need to do with the backup, though I'd actually like a lot more Delta V. I didn't feel like we had enough Delta V. So I'm going to push this a little bit more. We're going to start at the bottom instead of at the top. And maybe that'll add some redundancy too, just in case we have an engine failure for once. Um, I'll even tilt these a little bit. I mean, we're getting pretty close to the deadline here, and I'm nervous, but that just increased the burn, uh, build time quite a lot. Hold on a sec. Got one? No, okay. Maybe I'm just gonna have to go with one. Um, ooh. Is there, is there an engine that's cheaper? <laughs> um, uh, 997. Uh, we need thrust, of course. And, yeah, optimizing the stages. Anyway, let's focus on the first thing. The first thing is the comms. We need this to be UHF, and then we need a Commutron 16 to be S-band. And that should do the trick. The moon, that'll be fine. I don't think I need to tune it that much. It's not consuming that much power anyway. And, yeah, this one will be able to communicate with stuff Right? Uh, a little bit tenuous from a thousand kilometers to some of the other stations, except for the DSNs, but it'll be okay. Um, yeah, but we really need to squeeze out as much Delta V from this as possible. So I don't want it to burn so long. The problem is we don't have something between the one kilonewton and the 100 newton. We could probably trim down how much hydrazine we're carrying up here though. That'll give it some more... Oh, um... Yeah, we still want that, maybe, for control. I don't know, this payload adapter with control core might not be necessary. I think MechJeb works just fine with the CubeSat. So, maybe we don't need that at all. And so we'll re-enable the decoupler on this. I'm trying to optimize here. A 16 minute burn time is just too much. I think we have to ask more from this stage and not try and get more from the little 100 newton thruster. Maybe adding some boosters early on would be cheap. Oh, uh, we don't. We still don't have radial decouplers though. If we just slap caster ones on, that's probably not a good thing. Ah, eh, it does take too long. Seems okay, but it's super tough to say. Especially since we can't plot anything. Okay, well, let me save this. Save edits. We edited quite a lot, so the build time is more. And currently too much. We're gonna pour some money on. I want to be able to build too. So I'm just gonna keep spending money here. Okay, let me get another one queued. Let me just say, uh, duplicate. Okay. And on this one, we'll also rush it a little bit. Better than getting the consequences of failure. Okay. Alright, so with that in mind, time warping. I think we should just launch now. All right, SAS, oh, well, we don't have SAS, right, because yes, the payload adapter really was the only thing with SAS, but presumably smart ASS can still control it, hopefully. Ignition.
and launch. Execute. Megjeb does not follow other people's rules. Probably there ought to be a way to make Megjeb follow other people's rules, but for now. I forget if RP1 makes Megjeb successfully follow all the rules. Probably. We are past the speed of sound. CubeSat battery short circuit. Well, good thing we have a lot of CubeSat batteries. Alright, staging. Bearings. Alright, and staging. Well, that's not a good sign. We're gonna require more from this stage. Guess we'll end up with more at the end, but... Yeah. Still gonna be interesting. Orbit line not looking like a super great match for the moons right now. Okay, shut down. A little bit more circular than normal. And nice and tight as well. Uh, though, that's not great for line of sight with satellites. Uh, basically, we need to come ar around a whole orbit. And probably start close to Cape Canaveral, hopefully. Well, our orbit isn't passing over Cape Canaveral right now, so... We do seem to have help from this Serenity 2 over here. That's nice. Um, over Brownsville, I guess, would be good. Okay, well, we've got this intricate web of communication here. I'd be remiss to give that up. So we're going to try and start now. And what we're looking at is 2,300 from this stage. And maybe we'll have seven, uh, 800 left after the full burn. Okay. Well, let's see what we get. Our orbit is definitely not in line with the moon. But if we burn now, we might hit it where the orbits cross. Oh, it's... I mean, it's not too far off, I suppose. But it is a bit off. Yeah, our current setup keeps us good on comms, pretty definitely. Yeah, we will be passing close to the cape eventually. I think we'll run out of that pretty soon. Yeah. Might as well get what we can. Not much, though. Darn hydrazine. Okay, go. Little 100 Newton thruster. Yeah, that Serenity is helping quite a lot. I think it was Serenity, not Serenity 2 that was helping. Serenity 2 is us. Well, right over Florida right now. Jetting along. We've picked up Bermuda, so yeah, we should be good through the burn. If we want to keep burning here. We are getting a little bit higher up now. But next time around, we might not have such a good comm situation. Now we've lost the cape now. Uh, it is getting a little bit stretched. This Kuru there. We're now just communicating through Serenity there. Mm, hopefully that'll be okay. I don't know why we can't get a direct line to Kuru right now. Our Delta V isn't great, and if I have to make a correction, it's definitely not great. I want patched conics! Okay. Oh, we just lost comms. Gosh, good timing. Um, we might have gone a little bit too far there. 
Okay, we need to get higher up where we're going to pick up a DSN. Well, we already picked up a DSN, Madrid. We're on the nighttime side temporarily. Okay, we should turn for power here. So it looks like we're low here. Mid course, I'm going to try and lift that up and see if that works out for us. Right now, oh, it's, I need to spin to stabilize. It doesn't want to stay stable towards the sun. Right now it just says 26 meters per second with the main engine, so that's not good. Mm, battery short circuit, but we have a bunch of batteries. Another battery short circuit. They're really piling those on, aren't they? Okay, here mid-course I will try to just pull that up. So, normal plus. And just use what fuel we've got. Okay, I do want to be able to make little corrections with the RCS. Let's point back at the sun. Will we meet up with the moon? Will it be 5,000 kilometers or less? It's really a long shot, isn't it? We've lost another battery. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna need to tweak uh, the batteries with the old scrap thing. RCS port failure. Okay, um, ooh, 8,000. Okay, if we play this right, you know what? I don't even want Smart ASS trying to do this. Um, I will try to manually turn so it doesn't use too much. Oh, 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 because we lost an RCS port, it's making a fuss. Okay, okay, no, stop. It's gonna use more than we want. Okay, we're currently with a periapsis less than 5,000 kilometers but tumbling all over the place. Hopefully we'll get some power tumbling in this particular direction. But technically it doesn't say that we need power. Well, okay, we do have to collect science, but we could do that right now. Okay, science time. Yes, it's satisfied that we've done the science. We just need a periapsis under 5,000 and we're okay. And right now it seems to be under 5,000. Okay, 4,940 kilometers it says, sort of. Where's the moon? There's the moon. Let's find out. Will it work? Communication failure. Well, yeah, well, there goes any opportunity to do anything with it. But that wasn't part of the requirements. We've lost comms completely. Oh, I thought the commutron going out would be enough to lose comms, but all right. We actually have comms. I guess we're relaying through something? Okay, we did it! We did it! It worked, just barely. Okay. Alright, we saved ourselves. Lunar flyby accomplished. But boy, there's been a lot of... A lot of fuss here. How many things got... I mean, we vessel complete. Well, stage destroyed as normal, but... Oh, scrap. RCS port, short circuit battery, short circuit batteries, RCS port, communitron. But we have comms. Let me see the line. Oh, it seems like a direct line back. So I don't know what the communitron failure was, but uh, it's not actually stopping us from communicating, it looks like. Or maybe it would only kill the stock communication and it doesn't actually kill the real antenna communication. That's possible. It might not know about real antenna communication after all. So, um, well, we got a different biome here. Atkin Basin can transmit. So we got some science around the moon. We probably could have gotten a science data from around the moon contract, <laughs> but we'll have other opportunities for that. At least we got the lunar flyby done without the maneuver nodes, without the patch conics, finally. Okay, there we go. All right. So on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. 
and I'll see you next time.